us each and every Wednesday here on the Talk of the Town. She's on the phone line here this morning. Good morning, Congresswoman. How are you? Good morning. Yes, Good morning. Getting, getting a little exciting here, talking uh, over the last few <laughs> days to uh, Assembly <laughs> candidates, uh, some that... Uh, some that are around your area. Not necessarily. We don't have any primary going on in your old seat here, but uh, there are challenges. Yeah, so. aren't, you, aren't you glad you don't have to worry about that frustration? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I never have. Uh, this is the first time I've ever run for office where I didn't have a primary. Right. <laughs> so you can watch from the sidelines. <laughs> and uh, the federal primary is actually in June, so uh, that time period has been over for a while. But it's still really important. I, and I, I enjoy listening to what the assembly candidates have to say. Uh, the biggest problem facing our state is what's going on in New York government. And, you know, we're trying to help on the federal side, but the state government is uh, is very uh, expensive. Important. <laughs> I mean, it's very expensive, uh, very corrupt. Uh, the way it operates is just it's just embarrassment to to our state. I mean, we have a governor that is just a, a megalomaniac who's out of control, who doesn't have any regard for the taxpayers or hardworking people that are in this communities. He is determined to take away our freedom. And uh, it's really important that we send somebody down there who is willing to stand up to these people and has uh, some knowledge of, of what's going on. I mean, he's, he's just a disaster. And you basically, and I think I, I listened to your earlier interview, and I think Rocco pointed it out. It's one party rule in Albany. I mean, the Democrats control everything. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of control on the Senate side right now because we have a, a just a, like a sliver edge there, but it's very hard for the Senate to hold back what's going on uh, in the uh, in the Assembly, and you know the, the the power is coming from New York City, and New York City is is uh, forcing all of these one size fits all policies, you know, supported by Cuomo. Uh, we haven't had a an assembly member in the 119th who's actually stood up to the people in our region in a long time. I mean, they oh, yeah, look, really wanna... sided with Cuomo and Silver and whomever and, and has really just never had the strength to stand up. And I think you have an opportunity here. I know Rocco said uh, it's Democrat-dominated, but the opportunity to pick a Republican to stand up to these people and to continue to grow the ranks and someone who has common sense who really represents our region is going to be a real opportunity for voters. So I'm excited about the fact that we could actually get someone with some substance and someone who will stand up to the corruption in Albany. And I, I think that having a Republican in 119 would be a real welcome change for the people in our community. Buddy, I want to ask you something about your in your race. There's an ad, there's an ad from your opponent that says something to the effect that you voted to allow uh, health insurers to charge people over 55 five times as much as they were paying before. Are you familiar with that ad? Oh yeah, it's, it absolutely can you respond? Can you respond to that? Uh, talk about a little yeah. bit. To elaborate. Let me just tell you, I have yet to see an ad put out by my opponent that is accurate. In fact, not only are they not accurate, they're bold faced lies. I voted for the American Health Care Act, and what the American Health Care Act did is protect seniors, protect people with special needs, to repeal and replace Obamacare, which actually hurt seniors, which took benefits away from seniors robbed Medicare, which our seniors depend on, of nearly a trillion dollars, and the expenses roll in year after year. We continue to cause the, the Affordable Care Act is directly responsible for the raises or, or the increases in the cost of Medicare, the increases in the cost of prescription drugs, the increases in insurance, the inability of, of people to be able to get affordable care, the, the Affordable Care Act is the opposite. So what we did with the American Health Care Act, and there was a great piece in the Empire Center that explained the opposite is true. We actually helped seniors because the Affordable Care Act actually gave able-bodied, childless adults, and I know it sounds like a lot of like a gibberish, but people who are young, 27, who didn't, didn't have dependents, no children, were actually getting almost 100% subsidy and benefit from the Affordable Care Act, while well, we took money away from seniors through Medicare, and they only received a 50% subsidy, and people with special needs the same, so they were left hurting, and they are right now. And so he claims that, but what he doesn't talk about is New York State is what they call a one-to-one -one ratio state. So in New York, you cannot charge a senior uh, or a person with serious disability. Say somebody has heart disease or terminal cancer, 
you cannot charge them more than you charge a person who is perfectly healthy, a 27-year-old in perfect health. They have to be charged exactly the same. So when he claims that we somehow changed the Affordable Care Act, uh, you know, or repealed and replaced it, which we should have done, we could have done, and we still need to do, uh, he's wrong. We actually protected seniors in the American Health Care Act, and that was the whole mission is that we have been hurting seniors. And you can see this as I travel throughout the district. One of the biggest problems seniors has is we finally gave them a raise. Our, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and President Trump gave seniors a raise in their Social Security after Obama had taken it away. And unfortunately, because we haven't repealed and replaced Obamacare, you've seen the cost of Medicare go up, which is a direct result of Obamacare. So now our seniors got a raise, but unfortunately, Medicare is so costly that it was eviscerated by Obamacare. So we still need to repeal and replace Obamacare. And I heard you earlier interview. The answer is not government-run socialist health care that Anthony Brindisi has voted for four times. That system will it'll take Medicare, people, all of us are going to be dependent on Medicare unless you're the very wealthy. It's going to take Medicare recipients and put them in the back of the line against all kinds of people coming into New York State, including illegal immigrants. Those are the people that they're protecting. They're more concerned about abolishing ICE protecting illegal immigrants, giving uh, tuition assistance to illegal immigrants and our own taxpayers right here in New York. And that's why it's so important that we keep the Senate Republican, we send a Republican uh, in the Assembly, finally we have an opportunity, and we repeal and replace Obamacare so that we can protect seniors and people that are working, our small business community. Those are the people that are suffering in our district. And I, I listen to, you know, the phony ads coming out from Anthony Brindisi talking about these horrible corporations. So did you know that 98% of the people in New York's 22nd district, the district that we're running in and that I represent, work in a small business? Small businesses are being hurt by Obamacare. They're being hurt by the increase, uh, the artificial increase in the minimum wage instead of a wage that comes through growth, a wage that's forced on them by government that doesn't match the neighboring state, that makes it hard for our small businesses to compete it's devastating our family farms. The high sales, or sales tax also hurts us. And the property tax, which Anthony Bernice has raised time and time again through Governor Cuomo. I voted against all those things. We need a Republican that's going to do the same thing down in Washington, in Albany. We need more of them. We need to stop what we're doing in Albany. It's insanity. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, we have brought hundreds of millions of dollars into this district just through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. It's something like five or six hundred million dollars has gone back to people in our community, and 95 percent of the people in this district got a tax cut from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Only the very wealthy didn't get a tax cut. And this is what, what they're not talking about because, by the way, the economy is doing better, and we're finally seeing a breather and a glimmer of hope after the oppression we've suffered under it with democratic rule in Albany. Claudia, I just want to clarify something quickly. You said that the wealthy did not get a tax cut. The, the, the high-income earners did receive a reduced, a reduced tax in the sense that the tax on their income went down federally, but the state, because they couldn't deduct their state taxes, they ended up with a exactly. total increase. But, they did, we, we but on the federal level, there was a reduction in the federal tax. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, a very small reduction. But we the, went from okay. uh, the top rate. I just want to clarify that. For, yeah, the top the, rate. The federal, the federal tax bill did not increase taxes on higher income people. And Claudia, no, I get, but what yeah. it did, but I'm talking about effective tax rates. So it went from 39 Based on New York to 37 and a half. Right. I, I'm going to take away the state and local tax deduction, and they probably end up paying more. Only the top 5%. Those are people that are wealthy with expensive homes, you know, with uh, high income. Yes. Sticking with spending uh, quickly here, and I know Rocco's got a few uh, uh, for you, which might tie in, but uh, the Congressional Budget Office this week said the U.S. Uh, budget deficit is reaching levels that are abnormally high for a robust economy like this. So they're saying the government spent $895 billion more than it brought in from taxes and other revenue sources during the past 11 months. That's a 33% increase from a year before. Uh, thoughts on that and, and, and how that could change, potentially change, should change? Uh, well, the CBO does everything in static terms. The CBO said that, what, 30 million people would get health care under Obamacare and only eight got health care. So 
So think about that when Anthony Brindisi's out there screaming that I'm in the in the resist movement that 